photoperiodism in plants. Flowering is crucially important for the plant to complete its life cycle. Although people have long known that plants such as tulips flower in the spring and chrysanthemums flower in the fall, it wasn't until the early 1900s a little more became known about what actually caused flowering. Beginning in 1910, Wingman Garner and Harry Allard conducted experiments to test the effect of day length on flowering by growing plants in growth chambers, in which timers were used to control the length of light and dark periods. They discovered that plants such as barely flowered when they discovered that plants such as barely flowered when the day's length was longer than a certain critical length. These plants, which they named long day plants, LDPs, flower mainly in the summer as the days are getting longer. Others, such as soybeans, flower when the day length is shorter than a certain critical length. These short day plants, SDPs, flower in the fall as the days are getting shorter. Still, others such as broad beans and buckwheat flower almost at the same time regardless of day length and are called day neutral plants. Based on these discoveries, they coined the term photoperiodism in 1920 to describe a plant's ability to flower in response to changes in the photoperiod the relative lengths of day and night. All flowering plants have been placed in one of three categories with respect to photoperiodism. Despite their names, scientists have discovered that it is the uninterrupted length of night rather than length of day that is the most important factor in determining when and whether plants will bloom. For example, if SDPs are grown under short day conditions but the dark period is interrupted by a flash of light, the SDPs will not flower. However, an interruption of the light period with dark has no effect. Thus, SDPs should more accurately be called long night plants and LDPs should be called short night plants to emphasize the key role played by darkness in photoperiodism. Most plants require several weeks of the appropriate long night or short night cycle before they will flower. The late 1920s also saw the discovery of a biological clock in living organisms. It was shown that the movement of leaves on a bean plant from horizontal at noon to vertical at midnight continued uninterruptedly for several days, even when plants were placed in total darkness and at a constant temperature, and that the time between given points in the cycle, such as the most vertical leaf position, was almost but not exactly 24 hours. In the case of bean leaves, it was about 25.4 hours. Many other cycles have now been found with similar characteristics in virtually all groups of plants and animals. There is strong evidence that the clocks are internal and not driven by some daily change in the environment. Photoperiodism takes place in specialized pigment material called phytochrome receptors. Phytochrome receptors respond most to the energy contained in red and far-infrared light waves. Two types of receptors, called P-red and P-far-red, intercept these waves and coordinate the plant metabolism processes accordingly. P-red receptors absorb red light waves during the day, while P-far-red receptors absorb far-red waves during dark periods. As each plant type requires 
only a certain amount of light wave, too much of one or not enough of the other prevents flowering from taking place. Not only can phytochrome receptors absorb available light energy, but they act as light sensors that integrate with a plant's biological clock to provide a means for the plant to adapt to its lighting conditions. It is suggested that under appropriate conditions, these interactions between phytochrome and the plant's biological clock are thought to activate the genes for flowering. The photoperiodic requirements of plants depends on geographic origin and distribution. Short day plants grow in tropical and subtropical regions, and long day plants occur mainly in temperate and northern latitudes. This factor indicates the adaptability of the photoperiodic process not only to day length as an ecological factor, but also to the entire complex of external factors. Photoperiodism is a unique clock that synchronizes the rhythm of ontogenesis with the seasonal rhythm. For example, short day plants have adapted both to the hot, dry summer of the subtropics and to periodic downpours. They do not, they do not flower or bear fruit during the longer days of these seasons.